Uh, greetings to you too, Captain Machine here, back for another video. Uh, this time the topic of conversation, as per the title page above, is PvP, or for the, those of you who are not into the acronym for that, it's Player vs Player Combat, and because it's Player vs Player, I decided to get my good friend Matt over here. Hello. Uh, come and help me out, and he is going to be versus me in terms of discussing this particular topic. Yes, thank you. So, uh, first of all, uh, what is PvP? Now, um, if you're talking at it from a game, video game point of view, it's the act of physically attacking another player character. And generally speaking, that is one aspect of it, but that's the most extreme aspect of it, in my opinion. Um, I mean, what do you consider PvP to be, first of all? Well, it's essentially, it's obviously the player versus player aspect of any game, be it computer games or role playing it's where you're attacking another player. Fair enough. That's it basically. Oh, okay. Because uh, I've played a lot of vampire and stuff like that and a lot of social games and a lot of well, you know, political games. Mm -hmm. So I consider PvP to be any action that is opposed to either the goals or the objectives of another player. Be that beating them around the face until they can't breathe anymore therefore they can't complete their quest or to surreptitiously buy their estate out from underneath them so they can't be rich anymore. Well, yeah, I mean, whether the attack's a physical one, mm -hmm. an economic one, or just generally being evil for, the, for your own amusement. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Fair enough, then. Um, yeah, so, basically, uh, that's the general gist of what PvP is. It's any action where the goal is not to disrupt either the NPC or the Games Master's world, it's a case of disrupting the player's world instead. So, generally speaking, a lot of people, times, the overall opinion is uh, that it's the Games Master versus the players. Yeah. And when you start on just elements like this, it changes that dynamic radically. Radically, yes. yes. Fair enough. Um, you, your average game, per se, probably won't encounter this. There are certain games that aim towards it more. Vampire, for example, being a fantastic example of it. Uh, can you give any others? Oh, well, obviously, vampire. To be honest, you can do it in any. But um, I mean, but any a game that's specifically aimed at that kind of play. Specifically aimed at that kind of play to a certain extent, Merc Two Thousand. Oh, okay, I didn't think of it like that actually. It's been a long time since I played that actually. So there you go. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm not reviewing it, by the way. No. It's out of print, and I've got a rule against not reviewing out of print stuff. See, I have a rule against uh, playing any game that has that bad an initiative system <laughs> in it. It's terrible. <laughs> Never play it. If it says Wiseman on the front, it's not Traveller. Bin it. Burn it. Defecate on it. Do what you like. Is that your official opinion? Can I quote you on that? You may quote me on that. In fact, you may erect banners to that effect. I think I will. By magics of editing, I may do that right now. Fair enough. <laughs> Works for me. <laughs> Fair enough. Right, okay then. So, basically, uh, before we get into any specific examples of what play versus player combat actually is, we're going to talk about the do's and don'ts because, much like the army games I talked about previously, where, what, where one player is in charge of all the other players, um, you can very quickly get some bad blood from player versus player activities. So, you need ground rules, and I would say, as always, you need a social contract in this. Now, which is obviously, I don't know if you've watched my army video on that one. Have you seen that? This is where you say no. Yes, of course. Okay. <laughs> Basically, it's it, depending on the maturity of your group. Um, if your group's very mature and handles different things on the whim, you don't really need one because everyone understands how every tool works. However, if you're not in a uh, group you think everyone's like that or it's a new group mm. if you're going to include player versus player elements you need to sit down and talk about this pretty much right from the bat so everyone's on the same page um, so you need to agree to basically the basic underlying rules of what this particular aspect of the game is yeah yeah um, you've probably been in a game or two where that's not happened and disasters have occurred because of it Horrible, horrible, game-breaking, session-ending, nobody goes around there in anybody's houses anymore. <laughs> it's used, actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I've been there too. I think, uh, to be honest with anyone that's been role-played for a long period of time, hopefully it hasn't had to put up with it, but I suspect the answer is they have. Yeah. 
Right, okay, first first things first, uh, I'm going to try and break this down. I don't know how many times I'm going to hold the particular fingers up and say this and this and this, but uh, first things first is you have to make sure that nobody takes it personally. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. Yeah, um, it's in character, it stays in character, and as, as you say, that's in a table, what's, what is said at the table stays at the table. Yes, it just depends on what you happen to say at your table. Okay, then. Have you been saying things you shouldn't be doing? No, no, no. I'm always on my best behaviour, as everybody knows. Nobody on this, nobody on YouTube who knows who you are? People I know might watch it. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Secondly, um, you have to be able to take in good spirits, especially if you're losing. Mm. Um, it's the same kind of principle, really, as taking a character death, for example, in good spirits. If you get killed off your character, uh, provided, of course, you don't feel cheated, you have to take it in good grace. You say, fair enough, that was fair, you know, you can develop the story from this, good role play opportunities for the surviving players to deal with the fact that they're dead. Um, it's the same amount of mental discipline, shall we say, or social grace or whatever, to admit, fair enough, you bested me, I'll get my come up, you'll get your come up and all that next time, Gadget, but yeah. you have to accept it, you can't whine about it. That's true, yes. For example, once your character died, the dumb thing is to roll up your next one, not leave, which I have seen done. The other, oh, the other, the other thought I thought of that is don't create anti-character. Oh, yes. I mean, say for example, play A, shall we say come Adam for sake of argument, That's and then player B will call Barry. Yeah. Now, Adam, player A's character kills off player B's character, spectacularly. In an evil one-on-one -on -one fight. Yeah. And then player A, who now has no character, creates an anti-Barry. Anti which is a character specifically designed to kill Barry's character. Yes. Or, another one to avoid is, uh, given a specific example, character and game-wise, if you're playing D&D or Pathfinder, in whatever variant, if you die because your cleric doesn't heal, please... Don't create a cleric with like augmented healing or something to show them how it, and I should break my own fingers for doing this, so apologies, but should be done. Are you, are you admitting you've done this before? No, but I've seen other people do it and it's horrendous because it causes, well, well it's one of the big don'ts. It causes um, interpersonal conflict and it's not characters. Mm. It's, I can play this character better than you. I think the final th final rule, so we've got three rules basically, which is nice yeah. and easy. The yeah. final rule is is basically an extension of metagaming, which is do not use player knowledge, try to use character knowledge. Um, this is especially true if note passing is not prevalent in a game. Um, I mean, first of all, if note passing is prevalent in a game, you know something's up when notes are getting passed around. I mean, for example, in my Rainwolf game, I'm continuing the passing of your notes. Yes. I haven't told you why I'm doing it. And I've definitely not explained to anyone else. But people know something's going on. Yes. So yeah. almost immediately, if a player can't separate player knowledge from character knowledge, they know something is going on. Whereas the characters have obviously got no idea. Yes, upon which point you then get bogged down in 20 minutes worth of... So, where are you going? Well, my character's off to take a leak, if you don't mind. Or... I'm off into town to buy an axe. You lot have bought all your provisions already. There's no reason for you lot to go. So you wander off, and immediately you've got an entourage. Well, just to make sure you don't do anything dodgy. Well, yeah, it's just to make sure that you're going where you said you were going. There's no reason not to trust them in game. Well, I mean, there's this magic point where the purple PC field shifts colour slightly, and everyone goes, "Aha! He's a player character, but not to be trusted anymore." Yes, he sort of goes in off purple, orangey colour almost. One day I'm going to have to explain. I'll exp when I get around to the how to roleplay videos, which I promise is coming very soon because Matt's going to help me out with it. Um, did you just flex? No, I stuck my thumbs up, which I instantly regretted because that's another breaking <laughs> of lens. Fair enough. I am not the thumbs. If I'm not looking at you, you're doing things. I'm going to see this in the editing, you know, don't you? Yeah. Fair enough. I've got my point now. 